and welcome everybody once again to the greatest podcast the east side this east coast anyways where whether you are mashing buttons whether you're stroking that bus or whether you are tossing them dice we have your six on all things gaming this is basement quest i am michael smith and this i am eddie jakes and we have some exciting fun show for you guys today so with the pandemic we know that a lot of people are kind of sitting back and you know like you're stuck at home and and hopefully if everything goes well and everything kind of flows through the way it's supposed to we can actually get out and 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 get into this beautiful world like we said uh recently we actually got to the table twice now Mm -hmm. um once for for ed's adventure and once for my adventure and it's been it's great it's just such a different experience to be at the table Um, gaming with your putties, the crunching of the chips, the personal jokes that go flying across the table. There's nothing else like it. Um, When that 20 does come up in the whole table, cheers and they scream and you have great ideas. Um, Which, by the way, we always have those ideas that come across. (laughs) That's fantastic. But that is exactly what this show is going to be about. Have you ever wanted to create your own world? Did you ever just say to yourself, Man, there's not enough people around here, and we don't have a DM. I got five or seven people that want to play, mm-hmm. but we just don't know. We don't have anybody who is a DM. Well, people, we're here to help you with that. As a certified GM and as a certified DM, we are going to give you the secrets and tear it down on how you can make your personal world feel like your world in very minimal time and with very minimal effort. And this can work with any genre. Exactly. It doesn't have to be fantasy. Exactly. You can do it with any one of the ones. You can do a D&D. You can do a Palladium. You can do a TMNT. You can do it with our, our boys over there at uh, Black Flag. Is it Black uh, Blackstone or whatever the ones we did just recently before this whole thing? Um, any of these game systems, the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you guys have is the love for the game, first of all. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have your rule mongers. You're going to have what we call your rule lawyers. And... If you kind of work with these people, you can make that rule lawyer kind of um, on your side, sort of say, <laughs> <laughs> and and work in your benefit. Um, especially if you're not a if you're not a bookworm, if you're not one of those guys that want to sit down and read all these things. Um, one of the hardest things that I think, and I don't know about you, um, when you are a DM and GM, is knowing all the classes, and and especially when it comes to like level the higher levels, mm-hmm. you can't be expected to be like, okay, I know what this guy does. So sometimes the players will hit you with that surprise. I, I hate that question. Like, <laughs> what does a level fifteen magic missile do? And I'm, uh, I'm like, well, you, he knows more than I do. Like, uh, <laughs> ask him. I mean, even if you're a game master or dungeon master, it, it's not necessarily mean you've played a level fifteen magic user for one. Right. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Like I, or I even play, flipped a page to that at, at that point. I mean, I, I played most fighter classes and even as game, a dm yeah. when you do come up with your uh villains sometimes they're not you know they're earlier and in, in earlier levels when you and you magic missile right. and then you're like oh i forgot all about that but I mean, we're gonna break this down as simply and as po- and as as efficiently as possible for you guys um because we, we want you to understand it's not it's it's not something you should be afraid of it's not something that should be like should be oh fun. Oh my god! Exactly. You should be excited about it. You should be the first. The first thing that you should come to your mind is the passion that you want to do it. Okay. So you have five or six friends, like I said, that are, that all want to play, but none of them want to DM. But you decide that you want to DM. That you want to do it. Boom! Right off the bat, you have one thing that the rest of those guys don't have: the passion to actually want to DM. The passion to be the GM. This works too if you're you're trying to bring up a game that nobody's played yet. And usually if they can see that you're really hundred percent into it, even though they may be apprehensive, like, I'll give it a shot. You know, Mike, Mike seems pretty passionate about this and he seems pretty excited about this and just get them to like, you know, roll up a character. See, look at the, look at the classes. See what you think. What would you like to be, you know, and usually end up with the best characters that way. Exactly. Like, you know, if you, you know, your friends better than anybody else, you can appeal to their interests a little bit. And that's the other thing is um, before you come up with this, this world, Talk with your friends. Talk with the what the world is going to be about. Maybe they already have an idea what their character is going to be, just like Ed was saying. And you can work on your backgrounds together. So you can say, hey, look, 
this is the first time ever I wanted to do a bard, and I'm not really, ex- I, I'm not too sure how the bard works out. And your DM's like, look, I've I've personally used a bard be- before as a as a character as a PC. And I'd be more than happy to help you with that. And this is what's worked for me. So you come together and you work as as that. No, you got to silence that stupid thing. <laughs> you you come together with your backgrounds and you and you work with it together as far as that's concerned. Um, as far as your world map, everybody says, oh, no, you got to go in there and, and you have to have a, a, like a focal point and your map has got to be set there. No. You can start with, with a kingdom, a town, and a dungeon for your day one and then just build from there. You don't have to have this world map from, from day one and, and you don't have to have this huge thing, this huge background. You could tell your guys they literally start here. They they. From, you've been here from day one. I mean, some people came across this town. However it may be, you don't have to have a huge world map. It, especially if it's your first time running a game. Like, don't jump into something where you could easily lose control of the game. You know, so... like Details, don't, details. Right. Don't, like, go um, crazy, like, oh, dude, I just, I just made this entire continent, and there's this town, this town, this king's doing this, this queen's, and this kingdom's here. And then lose control of everything that's going on because you gotta keep in mind if you're if you're being thorough and if you're loyal to the to the story you need to know the politics of the area you need to know um the motivations of the area um i, I mean i i hate going for the low-hanging fruit you know it's like okay here's a <laughs> you know here's a bad guy kill the bad guy here's a dragon kill the dragon you know yeah have a reason for um wanting to go there like in my own game that i'm running, right you know we've gotten this far so there's not gonna be any spoilers but <laughs> you know i i set it's like i'm playing i'm running a dead rain campaign not a lot of dungeons no what's the next best thing i was like ooh, medical supplies hospital a hospital can be a dungeon oh yeah you know what if, what if it's like decrepit it's falling apart it's infested with zombies you know there you go there's your dungeon at so, night, no power. I mean, that, no power. That's that's a uh, that's very dungeon esque. I mean, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys happen to live, but uh, here in Norwich, we have this uh, old uh, this old um, funny farm. Essentially, this uh, it was a psychi- psychiatric uh, hospital. Mm-hmm. Huge, huge. But I'll tell you what, go down there now. I bet you it'll creep the crap out of you. Oh, I know. <laughs> dungeon. That is a real life dungeon right yeah. over there, my. It friend. is a modern dungeon. For it life. is. It's a modern dungeon. Absolutely. I'm absolutely. actually. I'm reminded of a game you ran a long time ago. The the the, the locale was simple. Um, we're it was in Ravenloft. We're surrounded by cursed rain. We're stuck in this house. Yes. That was it. That was like a twelve-hour game. No, it was. It was crazy. It was it, fun. It's like too. you don't you don't need this whole big thing. It's just like okay, here's a sim- here's the players. How do I trap them in this house? Right. The rain is cursed. You they can't leave the house. They're in this house. There's no magical protection. There's nothing they can do. There's no way of getting around it until you figure out what's holding you back in this house. And then it's like now, okay, what's what's the goal? Okay, this rain is bringing these creatures. Like what's going on? And there's the it's a curse. Oh, there's ghosts. There's moss. It was great. It was probably one of the best games. And like, that's and that's just exactly it. Like we said, when when you have the passion for the game, you don't have to have a huge extravagance. You can build from that. You can take one thing and you can be like, look, from here on out, you guys have opened up this world. And you get home and trust me, after you run your first successful game as a successful DM. Your heart's going to be pumping. You're going to be excited. You're going to be like, oh, my God. And then just wait, that first text message. It, it might not be like for a couple hours or it might not be till the next day, but you're going to get a text message from one of your players. And it's going to be like, great job, man. I'm looking forward to the next game. And when you get that, that's when it does it for you. That's when you're like, that's I, I've done it. I've done it. And And what we want you guys to realize is – that is a, such a simple feat to, to accomplish. You don't have to sit down and you don't have to write a 30 page summary. So look, that works like for some, to, some, but. like, that's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for some people it works. Absolutely. It works. And if that is your stick and if that is how you do it, I am not telling you not to, but I'm saying to be successful, you do not have to do that. You can take a little story. You can write down little cliff notes. If they go this way, this will happen. If they do this, this will happen. 
Come up with little things on the side. It doesn't have to be this huge written thing. There's a lot of things out there that make um, things a lot easier for DMs now. Um, and GMs, I'm sure they have it out there. Uh, especially with D&D, it's so easy. They have these things called encounter tables. I mean, literally, and all you have to do is Google it. D&D, 6th edition, 5th edition, encounter tables, 4th edition, whatever you're doing. And you put in the party number. You put in the XP. You put in the terrain that you're at and this will search and it'll literally pull monsters up for you and how it works out. And then all you got to do, and they even show you the page DMS, uh, you know, monsters manual, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this thing, blah, blah, blah page there. And there it is. You just open up the book and there's your monsters right there. So simple. Now, if you already have those encounters set, now you go to the photocopy. Now you photocopy those monsters. And now those monsters are sitting right in front of you. There's so many things and so many so many easy ways that tables and stuff like that, that shouldn't even be a problem for you. It shouldn't even be a thought for you. The only thing you should be thinking of as a DM and as a new GM is your world. Now, let me ask you this. What, when you are tearing down your world, is, do you feel is more important? The land or the bad guy? Well, I can tell you how how the current campaign I'm running started, you know, because obviously it varies. Right. Uh, so when we said we we're going to do this, the first thing I thought of is like I need. Um, so you're not constantly making up things. I, I created the, the the county, the different towns. Yes. And I made a map. I with a campaign cartographer. Not everybody has that, but I had a general idea and I threw some towns in there. That was the extent of it. Threw some towns in, some names. I knew which one. And also, also don't forget, like. You've been doing this for a while right, as well. You while. have a lot of experience. This isn't your first rodeo. This isn't your first thing out. So, so you got a lot of tricks up your sleeve already. I did that. Let's put that aside. The first actual idea that sparked in my head was I envisioned an army base. I envisioned a quarantine. And I envisioned a crooked military officer. And I was inspired, honestly, by the a -team. It was a good movie. <laughs> well, I'm talking the show, just the show in general. But yeah, you get the movie too, where they had that yes. one, that one general who was constantly like yes. hunting him out, and he would show up in the show. Every yeah, now yeah. And yep. So I thought about that, and just like, okay, what if, what if, what if I had that? Um, and you know, you know, how would I go from there? I'm like, okay, so yeah, you know, get them in this base. I could, it's it's a limited locale. I got a basic idea of the layout. Essentially, I'm making the board for my board game. Like, right. Here's the board. Here's the players, and how do I just get the apocalypse started? You know that was my motivation. So do I do like to I do like to have at least one juicy villain in mind, because if you have a good villain and you can keep that villain going, it's always a good way to push the characters into the next. There's, yeah. There's a know. reason why they're called the antagonist. Exactly. You because know, it's, they're it's, meant to antagonize the players. They're meant to, to be the thorn in the side They're They're meant to be there to, it's the victory essentially. Right. It's the victory. Um, and, and to go off on that, um, how, how do you feel is, is, is too long for a villain to stick around for? Um, honestly, there, there's no length of time. I think you got to read the players. I think if you start having games where, um, that villain pops up and the players are just like, no, can't. <laughs> this guy and, again, <laughs> Ed and Mike are running out of ideas again. So this, this, this person. Now. Okay. Okay. I pull my gun. Roll it. If you start getting that kind of, where they start, if your players seem like they're going through the motions and there's body language, which we can talk, oh, yeah. we can talk about a link, the body Absolutely. language of the players. Absolutely. So if they, it gets to the point where they're kind of slumped in, throwing the dice, I'm sorry, if your player grabbing their phone and, and you know, the players I'm talking about, cause we have a couple, if they're like getting the ass out of the seat, throwing it down, going critical, baby, that's, you're doing a good job. Yes, absolutely. You're absolutely. doing a good job. But if it gets to the point where they're doing the slouch toss, all right. You've lost them. Yeah. Unfortunately, so, you've lost them. Yeah. So you got to read that. And that's the point where it's like, all right, it's time. It's time for this part. It doesn't mean you have to end the campaign. Campaign doesn't have to end with this. But this part of the campaign can end. It's like, OK, right. it, you know, it's time for some kind of resolution with this villain. And 
because in your D and D game, for like our what we call our our, our what our classic <laughs> characters, there, yes. you've had the same bad guy fucking with me for like what year is it? But anyway, but that's a great character, right. and the, it's now become more of a, a what's the word tradition. <laughs> I, yeah, I I think also at this point, um, the way that she she's almost a direct reflection of you now on, and how yes. you guys kind of like, it's like a story on how that's, you guys that's like great storytelling. No, it is. And that, that's, that's, and then something like that, you, she becomes your character at that point. It's no right. longer, it's no longer an NPC. Right. You know, she's your character. Right. From right. the DM chair. Because you've actually taken that, like you said, it's, it's taken it to a whole other level, a whole other story. Right. When you guys get to that, trust me, that's yeah. It, don't get me wrong. I'm not encouraging DMs like make a character per se, right. and then you know run, because then you get attached take to over it. the game. You get attached to a character, and that's not good either. Because if a DM has, and here's the other thing, like I I've seen this video. I'm not sure what group it is, but there's a DM out there, and he maliciously attacks his group, and like when they come up with ideas and and they work, he's like, damn it! Like I think it's all part yes. of the you know the fun of it. Don't be that DM, though. I mean, no. it is supposed to be the world against the people. But at the end of the day, like, you know, if you roll a nat 20 and they're facing a black dragon and these guys are, like, down to their last hit points and you know that crit's going to fucking finish off, like, two, three of them, maybe not have that crit happen. Maybe right. have a and hit happen, but it's it's you make the dodge a little well, easier. Never... Never be like obviously as the the DM or the game master you have, um you do have complete control. We'll keep it real. Right. There's certain privileges and power that you have as as the game master, but you need to still let the dice decide. The dice is, are supposed to be the ultimate judge. Right. And if that character that you've been kind of playing as an NPC dies because one of your players gets those lucky crits, just let it die. Oh, absolutely. Maybe it um, changes your plans. One of the but... one of the ones that we just had recently, my son was playing with us, and they've been chasing after this one guy. And uh, he was a player character, and unfortunately, they had to leave. So I turned this player character into an NPC villain. These guys were chasing him for a little bit. I didn't plan on this guy to die at this point. But my son rolled the crit, grabbed the guy by the throat. They fell off the building. He landed on top of him. I had to give it to him, man. It happened. The the the, the boss was dead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, yeah just be, it, be willing to let your baby go. Right, exactly. You know? Be willing so. to roll with it is one of the biggest things. And um, also to add to that, I want to say that there's so many podcasts out there. Ours is very nice. <laughs> it's nice. We we have our buddies over at Wait. Journeys. They're very nice as well. They're we, very we haven't good. gotten all bougie or anything. No, yet. no, 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 no. But there are some good podcasts out there that look when you're working and you can pop in an ear thing and just listen to them. Mm -hmm. Listen to them. Get some ideas. Get some ideas for your worlds before you say. Write down these ideas that yeah. you like. You might you think know? some of our ideas suck. I, hey, but you might think some are good. Exactly. So and then take the good. From there, take the good. Go the, to the, yeah, next, the one, next one. Take from the next one. Exactly. And, and, and find something you're comfortable. You might. I mean, you you might be the type that's like, <laughs> oh, I hate villains. I I, right. I like I like circumstances. You know. Yeah. Which you know? absolutely. I mean, I've actually seen some really cool um, adventures just set around like political freaking espionage and all this yeah. shit. Where they there's not really about it. They, right. You know. So if they, no, if that's absolutely. Your thing. And 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 like I said, and and now that be the case. I'm not going to lie. You, you, I mean, um, you can't come to me for that because I love the classic villain. I'm not going to lie. I no, love I, I love, you know, I love the you thorn on the, the side. Villain. You know I love the villain and I like the politics of it. So, yes. so all my villains are politicians. No, absolutely. If they but, if there's a deal you can make, it's going to be made. It's going to be made. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to also, like I said, going on with these with the podcast, it doesn't take any amount of time. Like even like I said, no. even if you're not watching them, you're just listening to them. You'll get the ideas. They'll come in your head. You'll be able to, you know, focus on different aspects of these games that that are important to you and for free. Exactly, like and that's back the in best the day part. When we started playing. We had you nothing. Had to subscribe to Dragon Magazine. Oh, that was the only publication. If you want or read tips. books, I mean, that was the other you big know? thing. What few there were. Because, yeah, no, true, true, absolutely because, you know, true. We we're all we we're all worshiping Satan back then. No, I, the 80s, you're right. Yeah, so. no, I couldn't believe that. That yeah. was crazy. How we turned around? 
I know, right? It's so incredible. It's so incredible. Yeah. Now, now you got like movie stars playing like you know, Vin Diesel and Joe Manganiello on there. Joe but, Manganiello's got a whole room. Oh my room god, like dude, he's yeah. he was fantastic, man. He he actually, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind having him. And he showed up for. Uh, we're gonna hit that later. Oh too. yeah, we're gonna talk about. We're gonna that hit later, that so. too. I was it was cool seeing him. That was great. Yeah. Um, but I but I do want to I do want to emphasize um, when you guys when you do decide, hey, look, I'm gonna DM, I'm gonna GM. One of the best, biggest things that you can do is have a feast at your house or wherever you're going to game. Mm -hmm. Have a big feast. Make your characters that day. Introduce each other. Even do like a small little tavern adventure where they meet so you don't have to have this whole meet and greet during the actual game. Get that world. Get that feel. Get everything going. And leave that little bit of excitement so when you actually do do your game, People are looking forward to it. And yeah, when it, you get that text going, hey, guys, I'm looking forward to doing it on this game. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. Yeah. And while, when, and when you're making characters, too, like do some like skirmishes. So like if someone's not familiar with the rules, and they're like, I'm not I'm not quite understand this magic combat. I'm like, OK, well, here's a scenario. And you, you know, put them in. You're this. this that. Yeah, it's a really good point. You know, the the attacker rolls this. So right. In this, so at this point, you would roll that or you look at this score. If this score, that score doesn't match, you know. You get the idea. Right. I mean, there's so many different rules and stuff. Yeah, because you might, it's a good, very, very good point. You yeah. might not be the only new player there. You might actually, or, or the new person, as far as a DM, GM is concerned, you might have a new player there. Somebody who's yes. never even played a role playing game before and is completely lost. But do you know how many people out there want to play? And oh, I no, know. I see it all games? the time. I see they it on Twitter all the time. Yeah. I wish we had a DM in our area. I wish we had more players in our area. And don't get me wrong. The, the way that the internet is designed, there are, I think it's it's Roll20, right? We've talked about this before. Is roll20. It, is yeah, Roll20. Thing, there's, uh, yeah, there's a couple other. Fantasy Grounds is right. there. Right. Yeah. And they're really good about it. Like, if this is your thing and, and you want to do it, by by all means, dude, there's there's so many opportunities for you to do this. Um, there's, there's even people that are just playing over Zoom. Right. Absolutely. You know? I, dude, absolutely. And, and and you know what? If, you, if your group is that tight where you're not really worried about the dice rolls and you're more worried about this. If you this, got one of these... You can find a game. Yeah. No, absolutely. Honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm not, but I'm also here to tell you the roots of where role playing games came from, whereas was at the table. At it the was table. sitting across from each other where you can see each other act. You can, you can feel the emotions in the room. It's, it's a different feeling when you're, when you're at that table. And if you get the opportunity to do this, do it because you can't you can't pass it up. You can't pass it up. This is how it's intended to play. No matter what you play, no matter how you play it, at the table at least one time, you gotta do it. You all gotta right. do it, man. I mean, <laughs> this, all, this all started with all war games and stuff like that. Absolutely. You know? And people love, like they love reliving the Civil War and the World War II games. It's where it all started. So the know. biggest thing: what if? How could I have? How could I have won that? How yeah. could I have turned that around? You know, know. what I'm saying. Yeah, how, yeah, the Battle of the Bulge. How would right. I have done it? How how would yeah. I have done it different? Right, exactly. exactly. Could it could have changed? What if I what if we lost the war? What would this look like? What would you know? Could, you know things like that. That's you know? a big one, right? Exactly. Which, which actually would bring into uh, another thing that I'm thinking important. What kind of what kind of materials should have? So if you're running a game, a first time game, what kind of materials would you have? Because let's forget that you've been spending years painting miniatures and and doing all that. At a minimum, you're starting a game. What should you have? You got to have dice, first and foremost. You have to have paper. You got to have that GM DM book, no matter what. It's got it. Even if you're not reading it page for page, it's there for a reference. You need the player's manual. And let me tell you why. Um, you just need to have it there because it'll give you an idea of the character classes because a DM's guide, GM's guide is not going to have that. That is specifically for the player's not saying you're not supposed to look at it, but it's there because this is an everybody, everybody can access it. The DM GM's guides are not accessible by the players. The players cannot just grab onto this DM guide and be, hey, let me go look through this. Yeah. It is not. That is that is your Bible. That is your Bible to the world and your rules that you have to follow by. Now, at least get a general grasp of the rules. Um, um, a get screen. a general grasp of the classes. So, right. So you know that like you, you at least know enough that if a 
characters like, well, I'm going to be this race and I'm going to play this class that you know enough to say, I believe there's restrictions. Can you at least double check? Right, exactly. You don't have to be like, well, actually. And going back and going back to the whole, hey, if there's a rules, if there's a rules There'll lawyer there, hey, hey yeah, he's, <laughs> he's not lying. There'll be one. If there's a rules lawyer at the table, make him your buddy. That's that's yeah, the best exactly. way to be because he'll be the first one to be like, ah, uh, no, that doesn't work like that. And you'll be like, uh, how does that work exactly? And, and you know, I know he's listening. And, and that's just that, like, <laughs> as as a DM, you're not – I just want you to understand this. Get this through your head. This is the biggest thing. You're not expected to know all the rules. The players are not going to look right to you and be like, why don't you have the rules? Why don't you have the answers? It's it's not like that. It's This is a game that's meant to be played with a group of people. And if you don't have the answers, somebody has the answers. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's their character. I mean – it's kind of embarrassing that they don't know their yes. character. And have a good idea where to look because, I mean, the book's there. You can open the book and look. Try not to take too much time going through books because that, that you've essentially yes. put the game at a standstill. No, absolutely. And it will kill the vibe. But. It does. It does. You want to kind of get a steady pace, but you want to get it right as well, which leads me to another one, um, a.k.a. the house rule. Um, if there's a question that you just can't find it and you don't have somebody that's, you know, been there forever and they don't have the answer you can't find it you can't find it on google take a die 20 sider six sider whatever you want to be call it high or low if it's low then it goes this way if it's high then it goes this way you don't question it you continue playing it at the end of the day if you find out the answer good on you your lesson learned the game never stopped it didn't you know didn't affect it say too much but it allows you to move it forward and not, like Ed says, sit there and flip through the pages. Mm -hmm. Don't kill that vibe. There's nothing worse than when you're trying to create that spooky element and you hear the pages flipping and you're like, hold on one it's, second. Some, some of these rounds can take time as it is between combat, getting more a little combat if there's magic involved. Exactly, in and especially systems. the way... You want to move it as fluid as possible. If you got to constantly stop and read the book... And big ups to Dungeons and Dragons for having the cards now. Oh uh, yes, that makes it a lot easier. It does. Uh, if you're playing a, a, another system, um, encourage your players to if they like take certain it's skills, it. spells, write down exactly right. what it does. So Just drop that money the into those cards. He's not yeah. lying. I mean, if yeah. and a lot of these companies are doing it now. Palladium's doing it, and a lot, you know. Oh, no, yeah, no, uh, no. I mean, they should. <laughs> but a lot of these companies are doing it now, and it really, and it's it's so helpful. And and they're they're really inexpensive. Even Warhammer, which 40k is the most ridiculous when it comes to expenses, even Warhammer is making their cards in a f cheaper. <laughs> Let me say. Let me phrase it like that. Okay, that's all. I, I one thing I'm going to throw out. Everything you said, yes, definitely you need all that. Um, if you can, obviously, Dungeons and Dragons have their own shields. Yes, but. Make your own. Yes. And put all the important charts. That's what I did. I have a D&D yes. &D chart, but I literally glued my own stuff on there. The stuff that I constantly want to go through. Because sometimes you look at that chart I, and it's like, level up. I don't need to know what the I grabbed, le next level up is. I know. Like, I, I, I grabbed a great uh, product from Stratagem. Uh, you've seen it, that shield I have where mm -hmm. you can put the, your own inserts. And I, I made a That's bunch cool. of inserts on Excel or whatever spreadsheet program you use. And I've got like, I've got tables. I've got reference guides to pages in the book. So if I do got to stop and look at the book, um, I can flip through it. Boom, it's right there. It's, yeah. We're not saying that the time isn't going to happen because oh, the time going, stoppage is going to happen. Exactly. It, you can't help it. But if you can minimize it, if you can minimize the amount of time that you're taking going through those books, it makes it more enjoyable for everybody yes. there. Absolutely. Yes. Try to do what you can to keep the thing going, even to the point where if it's like, don't keep stopping reading the book for like petty skills or something. Just be like, just roll. Right, exactly. And like I That's said, when it, just roll. roll just when dice. it comes to that high, you know, house roll, it's like whatever, uh, high, low, boom, okay, I'll give it to you. And then question it later. Yeah. You know, oh, hey, I found that out, by the way, guys, and this is how it's supposed to work. And then everybody will plus, remember that, plus, you know. it is literally impossible for these games to cover every possible scenario. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> it's like you, you got to use your you got to use your logic as much as possible. It's like, 
It's like, okay, well, the, well, well, <coughs> will the stealth skill let me do this? You know, and it's kind of on the. It's not really stealth, but it's kind of stealth. Right. You know, use your best judgment. And like I said, the best, <laughs> just roll. <laughs> and uh, as far as like, if you guys want to use miniatures, yes, some of the miniatures out there are kind of expensive, and maybe you don't want to paint them. You don't even have to do that. Buttons, quarters, Legos, uh, Lego dudes. I mean, you can grab one of those um, whiteboards now, and they actually have the grids mm-hmm. on them now. You can do your 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 dungeons on that. You don't have to spend them. It does make it nicer. Mm-hmm. Is it nice to have a fully painted miniature out there and, and everything all cool and dungeon? Absolutely. Yeah. I does cheap, it really pa- add? paper miniatures off a right. drive through RPG. But does you know? that really add to the ambiance of D&D? No. Does it add to the ambiance of Palladium? No, it doesn't. What adds to it is you. What adds to it is the world that you create and how you guys come together as a group. That is the most important thing. And we just, like I said, we want you to realize it's so easy. So if if you're listening to this and, and you're on the edge, me and Ed will tell you right now, you can do it. And not only can you do it, you can be one of the best out there guaranteed all you got to do is have the heart for it and a little bit of time and you're going to make your players and your world outstanding and don't forget the snacks and oh yeah you need snacks, yeah, snacks. You need snacks i mean you're going to snacks all the time yeah, you need snacks so um let's uh let's just break it down man cuz uh everybody if anybody hasn't seen it and we're going to say right now spoiler alert um leave if uh if you haven't seen the justice the Zack Snyder Justice League um it's on hbo max right now dropped yesterday four hour monster it is a four hour. it didn't feel like it though honestly you know it didn't it at the first hour did the first hour did i looked yeah. up and i was like and i even hit the control thing and i was like yikes if, <laughs> that was only an hour huh? if, if you're not if you're it, to put it in perspective if you've ever sat down and watched titanic from beginning to end <laughs> this is longer than that this is like dancing with wolves shit right here, people. Yes. You know, this is dances with wolves. So, I mean, obviously, we're, we're, we're giving our honest opinion on it. Uh, everything right, we love. Here, I have a new one for this. You need a beverage? Are you? Um, I'm good for now. Thank you. So we're, we'll, we'll give you our honest opinion on it, what we liked, uh, what we didn't like, um, whether, you know, whether or not this is worth, uh, you know, checking out. Um, so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Spoiler alert. <laughs> this, alert. Is, this is your last alert. chance <laughs> because we got to talk about it, people. It's, you are uh, everybody is talking about hey, it. Spoilers Spoiler alert. alert. All right, here we go. Um, right off the bat, right off the bat, um, with with well, sp- I, honestly, right off the bat, we should say largely the it's not so much of a spoiler. The themes and plot of the movie is pretty much the same. No, it is. No, yeah. he's absolutely right. So, he's absolutely. If you've already seen the Justice League. It hasn't. No, it's 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 not like oh my god, it's a whole new movie. It's not like Thanos didn't snap. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Thanos not one snapped. of those things. I know, I know. But you do get to see Dark Side, and dude, I liked him. Dark Side looked fucking great, dude. And when they put him down, when Ares put that axe in him, dude, and he was bleeding mm-hmm. every. First of all, they didn't they didn't they didn't shy away from the gore in this, which no. I loved. No, there, there's no, uh, no. Here's the thing. This is a movie made by somebody who has love very for little the comics restrictions. And love for the DC universe. Let's just say that. He loves the DC. Whether you love. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll say he loves the mythos at least. I don't know if he, uh, you know. He, he loves, loves the mythos of these characters. All right, come on. Some of the slow motion. He loves comics. That's Zack Snyder, though. He loves comics, though. All those, even at the end of it, when it was, you know, the Justice League pano, it was like we had five A much angles. better one. <laughs> no, it was. It was. It a was. much better pano. But... <laughs> it was. So. But we didn't need all five of them, Zack. All five of them. It was like it was like five different comic book scenes. It was great. Yeah. They're, they're, here's the thing. There's there's I, there's a lot of this movie. I think they could have cut out to make it shorter, but this is definitely a movie where the it's stu- a director's cut. The studio cut. basically gave him money and said, "Go ahead, do whatever you want. It doesn't matter at this point." Yeah, we're breaking up with you anyways. 
spend or spend whatever you or I, will they? I don't know. That's a good question. They that did, is they good... did it because everyone was like, release a Snyder cut, release a Snyder cut. I don't know if you've had it. I'm trying not to be so negative here, but I don't know if you've been on Twitter today. Josh Whedon is getting his ass Dude, handed to him. He's getting tore up. Now let, let, let's put the bat. I know he's got a lot of complaints and stuff by the Buffy cast and and all that. Let's put that aside. We'll just yes. Focus can on we the please movie. put that aside because that's not fucked that, up. Not, it's fucked up. That's he's, fucked I'm up. Always, and I am a Sarah Michelle Geller. I love Sarah. Michelle Horn Michelle. dog. You know that. And Charisma Carpenter. And, oh my god. And Charisma got done yeah. dirty, man. The, but let's not. Th- they all seem to. Oh, fuck it. We're talking about it. They all okay. seem to got done yes. dirty. Yes. You know. But here's the thing. I've always known Josh Whedon was an asshole. Yeah. Exactly. If you just watch his tweets. And and people are here's the thing too that I find funny and I, and I might even say this a little later on Twitter like people I try not to get too negative on my Twitter just but just watch Buffy you'll know how much of an asshole he is no but like people are are shitting on 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 what he did with Justice League like this is the worst thing he's ever done has anyone ever seen Alien Resurrection <laughs> <laughs> like he he wrote that movie like. I, I remember, like, when that movie was coming out, and they're just, like, written by Josh Dude, Whedon. And we I'm were like, ex- oh, the guy from Buffy? We were excited for it, too. And then I was like, what the hell is this? That was that was the perfect movie where the preview had nothing to do <laughs> with the movie. Like, when you went to go see that movie, you were like, Dude, where was the alien? You, you saw that, right? What it was hell? like, they they, like shot scenes for a preview and they never made it to the yeah. movie. And I, I got awful. I dude, got it was bad. Josh Whedon did not direct it or produce it, whatever. <laughs> it was, he doesn't get any blame for that, but he wrote that screenplay. And just based on that, I think he should be fired from life. I but, agree. So Josh Whedon is getting his ass handed to him. Like, and here's, here's the thing too. Like, I mean, I mean, I know you said you thought it was a perfect movie. I said, okay. I, I won't call okay. it perfect. Yes, I agree. I, I just, agree. You were you were still high on it. I am very high on it. And I, I, I am very high on it. I am. I'm not going to lie. I'm very high on it. I was smiling like a child at a fucking candy store last night. I'm not going to lie. All yeah. the little Easter eggs that they threw in there, dude. I was eating them up. I was eating them all up, and I was enjoying them. The parademons. <laughs> They Dude. actually look scary. They were awesome. They were, and then you notice the Earth ones. They yes. had more skull. Like they were different, dude. So they had different, different parademons from different worlds. You know, they they weren't like comical. Like in the in the theatrical one, I I don't know. They kind of oh like um, yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Like um, they were like the monkeys, the flying monkeys from freaking uh, from Wizard, Wizard, of, Wizard of Oz. Of Oz. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought they were. Yeah, man. And, and, and it's like I mean, knowing parademons at comic level like we do and then what was actually given to us it was like and don't get me wrong when i first saw justice league i actually liked it yes and there's still a lot of stuff that i, I like in that movie that i know i now know Zack snyder didn't do steppenwolf but was Steppen weak Wolf, as a villain it was so terrible and his vo- like i don't know like it didn't seem like they did much to his voice but they gave him like this echoey boomy thing yes and it worked it wor- and his armor Oh my god! Oh, that his was intense. armor was great. intense. Uh, the actual shape of his head was yes. changed. Yes, where a, a Steppenwolf in in the, the 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 theatrical one is more. It was more. It was up. like a horse. And in this Jewish. one, it's kind of more devilish. Right, right. Um, I like that choice. Uh, a lot more um, built. You know, yes, shape-wise. he was like his his like shoulders when walked, went in. Yeah, when he walked, you kind of can see the muscle tone through the armor. Yeah. Um, the greatest CGI ever. No, no. Considering um, this was all done after the the fact, you know, and stuff like that. Really good job. Um, I, I I felt bad for the actor that played him. Right. I think he and and I guess that that actor has actually gone on record and said he did not like the theatrical version. And he's much happier with. with oh, I'm this. glad. I'm glad because it's a, it's the same performance, same voice. Just, That's what I was gonna say. I thought it was it the same the voice, same. but they they like the boomed motion it. the motion capture. Capture was all the same by that actor and stuff. And oh, the facial, they just redid all. dude. When he got when when Superman first pummeled him and he realized what was going on, dude, that facial reaction was perfect, man. I was like, dude, like, all right. So break it down from the beginning. Obviously, um, you get Superman. They they break it down. Superman's booming. He's screaming. You're getting the sound waves and his screams wake up the um the mother boxes. Right. 
Because which, which they explain in the movie, and, and they're they afraid do, of yeah. them, right? Exactly. So they were quiet and they were sleeping this whole time because Superman was still alive. Now that they heard his death scream, they know he's dead, and they know that they can actually break free and start trying to search for one another. Yes. So it wasn't the fact that you know they weren't. Hey, look, these protectors have protected. No, they they were actually afraid that Superman was on here. Which, if you weren't paying attention. You could have missed that. And that's a really crucial thing. I want you to, this is why they did what they did and brought Superman back. They knew this. They knew that Wonder Woman wasn't gonna be enough. Aquaman, all these guys weren't gonna be enough. They knew they needed Superman. Who said that? Batman said that. Out yes. of anybody, he said, We need him. Like there was no questions. Um, on that note, compared to the other one where it seems like Batman wants, it seems more like Batman wants to do it out of guilt in the theatrical right. one. He's like, oh, I did this. Everything's my fault. And, you know, he brought up faith start. a lot in this one. Yeah. You notice that yeah. he was saying faith his, his a tone, lot. Have his faith. tone is very different. In, it is in the, the Snyder cut. Um, whether you, uh, honestly, whether you like that or not is, is kind of. It's not. I don't very think Bruce he Wayne realizes. I, here's me. I don't think he realizes he has to make the ultimate sacrifice yet. Yeah. I think he thinks at this point they're actually turning it around. That they're gonna win this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that he stopped that nightmare, and that's why he's like, "You got to have faith. You got. I got faith. You know, like." No, and he was. Got, he was kind of nonchalantly smiling yeah, throughout. We, it. we gotta remember too. Like this is. This is not. Um, Batman early years kind of thing. No, you know this is no the, this is this Batman is Beyond. Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. You're right. No, not, Beyond, not Bond. You're, no, Dark you're right. Returns, Dark Knight Returns. Returns. Yellow, yes, you know, yes. Um, against Batman. a mutant shit like that. Like right. he's so old. He's older. He's broken like, down. Know. He's he's looking for something. Like he knows that the world isn't right, but he also knows that he's not right for the right. world anymore. They, they don't do I, honestly. Both versions don't. And, and even Batman v Superman don't really do a good job of explaining that either. So unless you really know the comics and know the costume, the way you the did the co costume, big, you really don't big understand giveaway that. So right there. Some of the some of the dialogue that Bruce Wayne has in the movie makes a lot more sense when you when you look at it from that perspective. You know when he says things like you know you know um, the with you know, Aquaman's like oh, you're just like a bat. You know yeah. he's like worked in Gotham for twenty years. You know dialogue like that. It's kind of it kind of lets you know like he hasn't really been Batman up until Batman v Superman. He right. might have taken a break. He took you know, a break. He was just yeah. running his business and and stuff like that, you know. And then came back because of Superman, and then you know started like torching. After Superman came, they came back and started torching the shit out of villains. Yes. <laughs> you know, then he started killing people. Him. Oh no, Batman don't kill people. Yes, he right. does. <laughs> so I mean, look, understanding that aspect to it, I think makes you more uh, sympathetic to Batfleck. Yes. You know? And I liked him. You know what's funny is... I ate Crow. I, I mean, didn't I, like I, him in Justice League, and I liked him in this one. If it's... You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, Batman v Superman? No, no. I, I didn't like him in Justice League, and I liked him in the Zack Schneider oh, Justice League. Oh, I see the Josh Whedon one, yeah. Right, because it kind of, like you said, it kind of seemed like he was, he was very guilt-driven. There was a whole lot of guilt. I'm doing this for him. I made a promise for him. And in this one, like I said, he brought up a lot of faith. There was a lot of, yeah. I got a lot of faith in this one. I got to believe in this one, Alfred. If I, if I don't, that's what he kept saying. If I don't have this, then I have nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that was his thing. That's what he was going yeah. for. And I really with, liked that. Yeah. With, with this one too, like, so with the theatrical one, at, at just some point, they're just like, we got to bring back to life. This one gives you more information of how they discovered that they could even do that. I like that. And it has a lot to do with Cyborg. Yes. Cyborg I, had a lot note. more in this. Thank you. Fucking Cyborg, Ray Fisher for the win. Dude, bro. he was great. He if was you, if great. Did, if, you know what? Because I've already heard they're pissed off at him because he complained about Josh Whedon. Like, if, <laughs> oh, you, don't, if you don't put that man back in a fucking movie. Yes. And I'm, uh, this is going right out to Warner Brothers and the head of DC. You don't like comics. I agree. I agree. That guy, that guy put his heart and soul into that in, man. In, in the the th one we got in the theater, <coughs> it was like, okay, he's he's. I liked him, but he's. We got nothing though. Nothing. He like I told I I told Amy because Amy never saw the first the, the Josh Whedon one. She just saw this one, 
And she was like, well, I don't get, and I was trying to tell her and I was like, okay, you ready? Ready? That's when he comes in. There's already, <laughs> there's already YouTube videos and you're all like, comparing them. Just have her watch one of those. Right. Exactly. And I was like, but that's when he comes in right now. And she was like, but what about all that from before? You didn't get to see any, you didn't see any of that. But he it just, made sense. He just showed up. I'm pissed, ex- I'm pissed ex- at my dad because he did this to me. Oh, you want me to join a team? Fuck yeah. that. Oh, and here's the box. You know, here. I get that. <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, okay, I, I liked him. Just like, I, I would have liked to learn more about him or, or right. anything. And they go ham on Cyborg and they the did. Snyder Cut. They did. I loved it. I loved it. Hey, heck, even... even uh, even Barry West having, you know, um, Barry Allen, uh, Barry Allen. I, that was That's two flashes. Mixed was, together. I know. Right? I know my bad, <laughs> but there was the little, when he was at there, when he was at the interview, dude, first of all, I, I don't care if anybody gets hate. Okay. Throw the hate all you want. Everybody knows that the quicksilver slow down speed time method was the greatest ever. And all Zack Schneider did was do that again. I'm sorry. That was yeah. perfect. Even when he took the little hot dog and put it in his. Everybody knows that's how the speed force is supposed to work. Yes. Like we, we have the. They've been doing WB it is, I was going to yeah, say exactly. CW's, CW's doing been it. doing it forever. Like I don't get why Josh Whedon didn't incorporate just that little bit just to show you it's well it's clear he didn't give a shit about the flash no i know i agree i agree because the flash once again that was another guy that had very little time but once again on the zach schneider the moments that he had were so perfect did you not like out of everybody he was the only one smiling the entire movie cheese eaten so happy to be a part of this team dude that was just, he was like, in my opinion, he's like the Hawkeye of the team, the heart and soul I, of that team. I was I was really happy with, okay, so um, he, obviously Wonder Woman is beautiful. He sees yes. Wonder Woman, he's still crushing on her a little bit. Yes. But in the Josh Whedon version, he was he was borderline creepy. He was very creepy. Like he that was, scene where he lands on top of her and then quickly gets off. I'm glad, I, you know, I was like, I didn't know that was like, I didn't know that was good like, fucking call, dude. Like, I forgot this, that scene. Well, they had this that beautiful scene where she's leaping for her sword, and he's just like, and then pushes he pushes it right, it into, it her right to her. And at that, that's like the best scene. I'm just like, that's teamwork, right? I'm like this is Justice League. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I. You know? It's funny you brought that. Out. I completely and forgot about and that. Instead, cringe. we get that scene where he lands on top of her and shit, and it makes both characters a joke. Yeah. And you then know? the best part, the only the only comment he makes is, "You think he's in? She thinks she's into younger guys." That was funny though. And what does fucking cyborg say? She's five. Dude, she's years five thousand years old. Every guy's a Every younger guy. Every guy is a younger guy. Like that's he, funny. Though. He that's didn't even funny. dog it. It was perfect. It was perfect. Um, obviously, you saw the my man where he caught him. Um, right before that. <laughs> Barry Allen <laughs> jumps into the fucking Aquaman and he apologizes to him. He feels so bad because Superman jukes him out the way. Watching Superman enter the speed force. That was cool. I know they had it in the Josh, uh the Josh Whedon version, but they kind of like added a little bit more into this one, into the Zack Schneider. I don't think he went into the speed force, did he? You saw him when he was like looking at him, and then he literally like oh, well, shifted. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, not I technically. Know you, I, know, I know what you're saying. Okay, he's not technically in yeah, the speed you see, force. You see him like see Barry, regardless of how fast he is. That, right. Yeah. Right. That, you and that was that in. Scene. That was in Josh yes. Whedon's, but it was extended more in Zack Snyder's. And I well, you like, can tell which footage is Zack Snyder's in that one because of the mustache. <laughs> the CGI it's mustache so is not there. No, they did a great job. They did a great job. Well, he didn't have the mustache when he filmed with Snyder. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And they did this horrible job like C giant over it. Um but the suit. I liked it. I thought it was perfect. I thought it was perfect. I, and now, now you guys gotta realize, um, for those of you who aren't Superman fans, you know why he did the black suit, right? It helps him absorb absorb from the, the sun. sun. Exactly. Because he just black. he just been brought back to life. Exactly. He's, he's technically and, not and, full he's not full. And he capacity. was buried. Yes. He was buried. He was under the earth, away from the sun. If you guys have ever watched um, the uh, Flash Flashpoint, um, 
was the one with Batman. It was Thomas Wayne was alive and not bad. Flash Flashpoint Paradox, where yeah, okay, yeah, well that it, yeah. that one Superman was actually super weak, and the reason why was because they kept him in a government basement. And when he finally, the sun finally hit him, he finally started getting his powers, and he didn't know how to control them because he was he was poof, like For, gone. So obviously, we had a lot of criticism with Batman v Superman and bringing yes. in Doomsday, but it's done. Nothing you can do about it. Nothing. No, it's um, over. One of the reasons, in, if you actually <laughs> read that comic, which was a three three issues yes. three issue spread, um, the reason Doomsday was even able to kill Superman is because he was worn down. Yes, and you know his energy depletes, and he did manage to kill Doomsday at the last minute. But Doomsday ended up killing him because he's he was completely between constant heat vision, the fighting, and everything. Um, couldn't absorb the sun. Yeah, that was faster. that was going on, and not to mention when the fight finally ended, it was nighttime. Yeah, it yeah. was so there was you're talking about almost twelve right. hours of them Bur- fighting on the off ground, more energy than, right. than absorbing sun sun right. rays, and that's how Doomsday was even able to kill him. So it right. was like it, it was really a, a it was really a and rocky, plus he rocky was, fight. Just fight. Plus he, he was Kryptonian, out. or Doomsday being Kryptonian as well, was able yeah. to take in the sun, and he doing the same thing. So he's getting just as much back. I mean, so it was he was literally doppelganging so, himself. So that's the big reason for the black suit. It's not really explored a lot in the movie, right? So um, it's not. It just doesn't look cool. A lot it's, of, a yes, lot it does people, look cool, but yeah, a lot of you. Uh, what do they call them, normies that just watch these movies? I guess. Um, no disrespect, but if you just watch a movie, that's fine. But understand that was where the black suit comes right. from. It's not because it's edgier or whatever. Right? Like he that. wasn't an edge lord. Like he didn't put it on because it, it was... in the movie his blue suit's still there. Right. Exactly. And there there shoot, is no black. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Which I hated, and I love the fact that they threw this on him because. That's what he did. Like, and you could see all the different suits that he had too. I love the yeah. Like his his regular blue suit is is in the ship in the, in the Snyder cut. Yeah. he just doesn't put that one on. He right. puts on the black one, and there's a reason for it. Um, he actually wore that black one. Um, if we're we're going to the 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 original movies, the Superman Returns, he was wearing a black one when he first comes back to the planet yes. because um he hasn't been in the sun. He needs to absorb the sun rays. Right, and it's uh. Like the Kryptonians all wear black too, so it's a traditional Kryptonian, you know, suit because Zod right. wore it and all that. But um, yeah, there's a reason for the black suit. Um, it was cool that they put that in there, you know, just add something different. Do we want him in the blue suit? Of course we do. Yeah, I love the blue suit, but yeah. the black suit was just symbolic of him being weaker, like because he needed that. And then that also tells you, I mean. He still fucking beat Steppenwolf's ass. Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> I mean, go ahead. Break it. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so, the way the, the, the theatrical one kind of ends is your typical cheesy comic book ending um, where the, the, the parademons suddenly shows fear. And, like, they took it. I thought that was stupid. Yeah. Uh, but I, here's the thing. <clears throat> At this point, I'm already disliking Steppenwolf as a villain. And we, and we don't care. And if he so if he gets a little bitch ending i'm like this is what you deserve right you know because i wasn't really in actually i should say we should say this about steppenwolf like give you an idea where he's kind of improved so in the in the theatrical one he's more of a a megalomaniac all powerful whatever he mentions dark side once right and in this one this one he's a desperate begging for forgiveness he wants anything to come back into his army and this is his last chance and he knows it yeah he, he knows he has no more shots left he, he is this is these are all acts of a, of a desperate as a matter of fact trying to get back to he's messing world. up so bad that the uh the oracle there guy the Sha- shani right is shani shanid i think it's shanid. oh um oh hit uh, the one that keeps uh talking uh, yeah yeah it starts with a d oh yeah don dasad 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 so he goes he tells him, you need to do this 50,000 more fucking times, motherfucker. Like, yeah, he, li- he, he owes, here's the thing, he owes Dark Side a number of worlds. That's how much he owes. But he, here's, his, here's his opportunity to, to make everything right in one shot. Right, exactly. So it's like, he's like, I can get the three mother boxes. Um, and, th- and then he discovers this is the planet where he was beaten. Which, which, how do they not know that? That's the only thing I, I found a little I, weird. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like, I was looking for that because it seemed like they lost how this information was lost right. 
You know right. what I'm saying? And it's so, it, I mean, I thought about that. I was like, well, maybe the guy that had the directions got killed or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the navigator was assassinated. Yeah, that was, was that was the deal. He was like, the only God one. Damn it, you he the was map. the only one who knew how to come back here. Joe had it, boss. The new guy. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to him? He got evaporated. I, oh, I, what this, the fuck, man? Oh, this okay. purple guy snapped his fingers and he turned to dust. I don't know. <laughs> he was gone. That's so bad. Like, but so yeah, so the motivations behind Steppenwolf are much better in this one. Yes. Um, the desperation is there. there. There's little things too that were missing from the theatrical run that kind of define his character. Um, one of one, one of them is his own, like him. He, he's got this thing from Wonder Woman. Yes. Which I, I like. Amazonian. He kept and calling her the out. First time. The first time because he he kills the fuck out. He of He beat the shit the, out the of, them. of them. Yeah, he did. And. They're the first time they they encounter Steppenwolf, and it's kind of the same as the theatrical run. They're they're on that that thing there, and a little bit more brutal, a little more there's, brutal, but there's... the scenario is the same. Uh, some some of the dialogue is similar. Um, actually, Steppenwolf's dialogue is a little different. It's a little, yeah, it's it, it's a little better too. Oh, so it's, yeah. Wonder Woman and Steppenwolf are staring each other down. His axe is kind of in the ground next to him, and th- he just kind of has it like it, almost Western like thing where he's just like. Like he's licking his lips, you like he wants a fight with the Amazonian, and and you know him and Wonder Woman go at it, and it's much better. Oh, it was much it better was. fight, it was. and it just that moment you get a better idea of his character. It's like, he, well, not he, only that, he, when he, she he's, takes him, yeah, there is so much behind that head that when she takes that head at the end, you're just like, oh yeah, That's... you felt it. You were like, fuck yeah, woman, yes, yes, yes. So, yes. There, there's two pretty good. Uh, there's some pretty good uh, money shots in the movie where Superman kind of blazes off his ear oh with the heat God, vision. Dude, that was uh, awesome. Not out of him. Aquaman that was awesome. Takes his him. armor down. Takes his armor down, yes. yo. Like, I was uh, like, what? Aquaman spears him with the trident and. Oh, right and through. Oh. He <laughs> launches him back into the. Uh, <laughs> the flying seven up can. Thanks, Doug. <coughs> Crack the door for him. He probably wants to walk out. <laughs> so Aquaman tosses him into the air, and as he's going into, uh, uh, what do they call it, that tube there, the warp tube or whatever you call it, to go back to dark side. As he's throwing him in there, Wonder Woman lops his head off. There is no more Steppenwolf. No. And Where, the whereas the other movie kind of left it open. Right at the foot yeah, of Dark, Dark Side, Side, and he crushes this dude's head. I was like, he's like, yeah, okay, you beat my dude, whatever. But you know what the mo- – here's the thing. This is where I wish they had a little more background into this. If you read comics, you already know this. The thing with Steppenwolf, too, is Steppenwolf is an elder relative yes. of Dark Side. He's not like a, a, like, a, like a kid brother or something. Right, right. He's an elder relative, but Dark Side is the more powerful, and this guy's – Begging like I don't I don't know if it's like his nephew or something for forgiveness I forget the lineage but there, there's it's a like, family relation it's there, like if I rem- it's like uh, Scar and fucking Simba exactly. essentially and yeah. it's like it's like Scar trying to get back into Simba's kingdom and he's like run away motherfucker you know? yeah so I mean a lot of uh, crazy action and the action's great um, I'll never knock Zack Snyder he doesn't no. know how to do a good action nope. scene. No, um, it is. It he is. does get a little crazy with the slow motion. <laughs> yeah, the slow but... mo. We we can't take it away from him. He ain't lying. The slow yeah. motion is Zach. You, you do got to back off, buddy. But you know, whatever. It's your, it's your thing. <laughs> no, it's, it's here's the thing. Like I like I said, um, like I said to you on Facebook, is it a perfect film? No way. Is it a vastly better film than what we got? Hell yes. Yes. Um, Hell epilogue yes. breakdown. And, and I'm gonna eat some crow. Um, Because I was very, as you know, I've been very critical of Zack Snyder Mm -hmm. in these movies. Um, Now, now seeing what happened with Justice League and getting this opportunity to see what he would have done had uh, obviously he'd lost his daughter. Nothing you do about that, right? You know, but clearly they didn't bring someone in just to finish what Zack Snyder was doing. There was no brought someone in to change it, right? They didn't like what he was doing for whatever reason because they got DCC's Marvel and and. You know, they got to understand that what, what works in Marvel not necessarily going to work for DC. Exactly. But seeing this, I'm and I'm excited. Seeing the, seeing the atrocity of, of Wonder Woman 84. Oh, man. And <laughs> it's clear to me that the worst thing that's happening to these films is the fucking studio. La- exactly. 
Lack of direction. I, 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 Lack I'm, I'm now of giving, faith. <laughs> I'm giving Patty Jenkins the pass for Wonder Woman. Uh, I'm now realizing Zack Snyder's not the problem with the DCEU. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Aquaman and Shazam and the first Wonder Woman turned out great. We have no problems with those. No I, problem with I, those. I even watched Liquid Thor again, and I got to say, it's better than Thor. It is. It is better. The acting is better than Thor. I I got nothing. I mean, so, cool. his parents were the fucking steal of the show. Yeah. I watch it again, and it's fucking I Django like, like Fett a, and fucking. Uh, I love Aqu- the Aquaman movie. It was. It, great. it, was. it was. No, it was good. It I was love good. Shazam. It was fun. Oh, Shazam was fun. You Shazam know? was just straight fun. If you are on the edge and you have yet to watch Shazam, do yourself a favor. Put yes. that in. You are gonna love it. You are gonna love it. Yeah. All that being said. And 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 Patty Jenkins has even said that because they offered to let her do Justice League first and foremost, and she turned it down. She said, "But I might be open to doing sequels, depending on how they turn out." It clearly Patty Jenkins and Zack Snyder have a clear vision for the DCEU, I, and you need to let them make their fucking. Movies. I agree. I agree. I let, agree let with them what you're make saying. Their fucking movies the way yes. they want to make them, whether you like it because they're or making not. us happy. Comic book. I'm telling you right now, as a comic book reader, I am happy. So I'm starting this. With Wonder Woman 84, release the Jenkins cut. <laughs> Hashtag yes. release the Jenkins cut. Yes. <laughs> yes, let's do it. Let's, let's see it. how let's this world. Let's see Jenkins how this world could have been, man. I'm telling you, this is how you got to do it. You guys want to compete and with no Marvel J. J. right Amber. now? We and get let's J. J. let's not even Superman. fucking wanna... start. Wandavision was fucking on fire, people. Oh, God, was Wandavision crazy. was. Fu- Did you watch from the whole be- thing from beginning to end, dude? Be- Best television ever. Thank you. Thank you, dude. From from the white vision to Agatha all along, man. Was it Agatha all along? It was Agatha all oh, along. Agatha all along. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, like, I was apprehensive about these Marvel shows, but the WandaVision is, is freaking fire. We got... Look, um, uh, today, today is Friday for all of you listening, and it is the premiere of... Oh, it is. Uh, That's Fal- right. Falcon, Falcon, Falcon and Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. So I'm so going to be excited about that. that one. That looks After good, too. After that... We got Loki coming. Yes, pretty excited for that. Yep, and I don't know when they're John Woo this. or Johnny Woo is supposed to get his own little movie or his own little show now too. Is he? Yeah, uh. and people and and let me tell you, if you guys missed his little things going on, he was he was obviously an Ant Man, and Ant Man is kind of hit or miss, and Ant Man and the Wasp is kind of hit or miss. You know, Johnny Woo, Johnny Woo. I'm sorry, Johnny Woo. Yeah, I still have not seen Ant Man and the Wasp. I've seen they're the first okay. Ant-Man. They're they're okay, but Johnny Woo is awesome, and. He does these little things like he learns magic from um from what's his face? Uh Doctor Ant-Man. Strange? No, no. From oh, uh, just the little hand thingies, the hand gestures, right? Oh, the uh, card tricks. Right, yeah, right, he right. Does it, he does it in WandaVision. And that's exactly yeah. it. He does it in WandaVision, dude. And I was like, yes, thank you. Because and we got a great in that show. Um uh, if you haven't seen WandaVision by now, watch him. spoiler revert. Spoiler, watch him. We got a great uh Monica Rambeau character. Oh my god. So I'm looking forward. Hopefully she can improve Captain Marvel because I think that's trash. Yes. I don't I mind agree. saying it. I agree. I didn't like There's Captain Marvel. Uh, and Darcy was fucking great in oh, WandaVision, yeah, dude. Awesome. Dude, people. And um, this is the other thing. DC, you got, oh, my God, dude. Natalie Portman ripped for her role in the freaking Thor. Dude, she looks great. I haven't seen any previews. Look it up, that man. Look, uh, She's the biceps are there, dude. She looks great, dude. WandaVision's got me really excited for Doctor Strange. I'm excited uh, for Doctor multi- Strange. Multiverse of Madness. Yes. Um, um, our which- buddy, Bruce Campbell, recently did a tweet, a very cryptic tweet about did him the film being with that director, starring with that, with that guy. guy yeah. And he loved it. So there's he, he's worked with Rami. Obviously, Sam Raimi doing. I'm happy uh, he's back. To oh, I am too. Marvel films. I am too, man. Thank you, thank you. Know, you. Um, um, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, Sam Raimi, all in it. Ash has been in the Marvel universe. So is he Ash Williams, or, and this is my theory, could he be the White Nick Fury from another dimension? Now that. Would be pretty cool. Like I said, I said to you personally, uh, if they're gonna do that, they need the to bring back the Hoff. You need the Hoff. I do David agree. Hasselhoff, that would be original, so cool. And if they do have the Hoff, they're holding it. 
they're doing a good job of hiding him, dude. Let me tell you what. Because they, the whole Garfield and every, that slipped like a long fucking time ago. We knew that shit was happening already. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you just found recently the uh, Mecha Godzilla. If you guys Yo, haven't these seen guys the cannot pops, cannot keep a secret. If you guys haven't seen just, the pop Mecha Godzilla, please go look at it. It looks like a reject version of a metal doomsday from Batman versus Superman. <laughs> it is bad, He's man. Big it, head. Yeah, it does, but even so. Godzilla has a big head, and it doesn't look his eyeballs. That's what it is. His eyeballs are like this, man. They're they're. But terrible. you know what though? Looking at that toy, and you look at that brief scene in the preview where you see that diagram of some something's mechanical feet it lines up so it clearly does. i clearly in the third act and that's the 31st people that's this month as well we have hbo max hbo Sign max up. is is they're do they're doing it they're doing it right they're doing it right like we said we're hoping within a few more months everybody's gonna be able to walk amongst each other and the movie theater is gonna be open i'll never forget when i saw Endgame, and and captain america said avengers and then that hammer came back and it went assemble and dude i was in that theater oh, yeah. and that theater exploded dude and this is why we go to theaters man we don't just go to theaters to be next to a stranger and then don't say nothing like moments like that and you hear the crowd erupt and you're screaming and you've been waiting for that dude <laughs> well, you gotta remember when we saw infinity war with a snap we lost half of our heroes Mm -hmm. And we had to wait a year, a fucking year. You had to watch Peter Parker vanish, and it was <laughs> a like, year. We had to wait. It did. The field and then when you heard a cap on your left, dude, it was like hairs on you. You yeah. couldn't have. There was the the perfect cinematic moment ever. So DC, yes. Do I think that you have this in you? Yes, I do. After watching that last night, did you have that moment? Oh, God, no. God, no, 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 no. <laughs> no the problem is, the no. problem is and, and, and I think you're in greens with me, they got so impatient with these movies. And, you know, we've said it before, Man of Steel definitely should have kicked it off. Yes. You needed a Man of Steel. If, you, if you're going to obviously reboot Batman, they should have done a Batman. Maybe a Man of Steel 2 or something like that. Do something to establish the two main characters. Yes. Um, maybe then do the Wonder Woman movie. Instead of what we got with Batman V... Well, you could have done Batman V Superman. I, I think BV Superman could have but, happened. I think it could have... I think you still you could should have had not it. have had Doomsday. Especially... No. The Doomsday part that I didn't a, like. That, I was, in Zach, the Martha, that was your idea, the Martha connection idea. I do like. I made fun I of it, it a lot. Wrong. It was done wrong. I make fun of it a lot because it was done wrong. However, the connection is very important because you got to remember, Batman never had a chance. I never connected that actually until that movie. So I'll like I, it never dawned on me that both their mom's names were Martha. I agree. I agree. But I will say this: that being said, Batman never had the chance to save his mother, and now that he has a chance to do this. This is the connection. See, when everybody that's, says... That's where I think that, that it all went wrong. They should have made a stronger connection that by... Obviously, Superman's hurt at this point. He's been kryptonite. And he can't death. go nowhere. He can't save and, his mother. And if, if, if they had done a better job of... With Batman, like, th this is my one chance to save my mom or save Martha... Exactly. He that didn't even have to so save his better. mom. He didn't even say mom. He could have been like, this is my only chance yeah. to save Martha. And honestly, that's like the in that movie, obviously the fight with Superman and Batman is great. But yeah. that, that scene with Aff I think that's where Affleck shined his I Batman. do too. Absolutely. When he saves Martha Kent, I was like, that is freaking great. Dude, that was the great when he goes in there and busts shit open and he's just everywhere. Like that was that was Batman. Yeah prime batman right there like and he knew what he had to do and he's like he's like uh, i forget what he says like stand you know, stand back or i'll kill her i'll do it and he's just like i know you will and he just fucking launches yeah him. exactly that was great. <laughs> it's perfect and that's why i said this does work and those two do work because a lot of the things that a lot of people ask is how are batman and superman best friends because their lives really do kind they of complement each other they do batman they complement each other Batman is the darkest parts of all of us, mm -hmm. and Superman's supposed to be the the, <clears throat> the best me, the of best us. part. And he, they kind of say that in Justice League. Yes, they do. You know, he kind of puts that across, right? You know, but he is also 
just like us. He's moody just like us. He wakes up some days pissed off just like us, you know? He hates puppies some days. It happens. It's just the way it goes. The thing is, we never get a chance to see the Boy Scout side of Superman, and I think that's what he's trying to bring up, that we we never get this, what we fell in love with. Right. Like, we as comic book readers. We, we start to get it sometimes. And, so, and it just it gets, gets ripped gets, away yeah. from us every moment. Every mm. moment that Superman turns into this Boy Scout, it's like you people can't take the Boy Scout in him, and you say, "Well, oh, he's got to have a little bit of edge to him." No, he doesn't. That's Superman, and that's the reason why when he does break the edge, like the Zack Vision is seeing, mm -hmm. it's because he is perfect, and he couldn't take that anymore. Which is why the epilogue kind of doesn't make sense. No, because that, if the Joker of, is there, then that means Superman well, that, doesn't kill. Spoiler, spoiler alert. <laughs> Snyder kind of sets up injustice. No, I agree. And and, and he, it, it, here's the thing. There's a lot of stuff set up for future movies. We don't know if that's ever going to happen. No, because we. So, I still yeah. feel like they're broken up, and I kind of feel like this is a movie that, like... It's a dirty, I, it's a I, dirty I, guilt, you know, like it's a dirty guilt. Trip, I've, brought, I I've brought up my, my theory on how they could save this whole thing. There's only one way they could do it. And it, and it's not by having Henry Cavill do fucking cameos. Oh God. Which seems to be all they want to do with them. No, that is all they want. You know, them. it's it, bullshit. It, it's bullshit. There's a way to save this whole DC. Pay the guy, thing. pay the guy. He deserves it. If not, you he's, know, I, if not, he's going to be Captain Britain. No, from what I understand, it's not money. It's not over money. It's just Warner Brothers. No, yeah, they hate, they, they just don't they like Superman. The yeah, they they just the don't like Superman. They don't like the DC, Boy Scout DC aspect. DC Comics hate Superman. Right, exactly. You know, I mean, look, I don't know if you talked, they talked about redoing, uh, what's uh, uh, Valzad? Oh, yeah. They want, to, they want to do something with him. Yeah. Something like that, I think, or something like that. They got J.J. Abrams about. Get J.J. Abrams the fuck away yeah, from please. Superman. Yeah, please. J.J. J.J. Abrams Thank is you. not he good. Destroyed Superman. He's not good. No, we're we're good with that. We're he's absolutely not good. good. With that. And and he's like he did horrible Star Trek in my opinion. He did horrible Star Wars. He's not good. Keep J.J. Abrams Star away Wars. from DC. Just keep horrible away. at Star Wars. He was terrible. At Star Wars. If you like those movies, that's fine. I don't. Hey, we don't. We're not hating you. We're not hating you. But uh, I just uh, we're we're gonna get ready to wrap this thing up here, guys. We really appreciate the uh, things. Um. I want to thank you guys all for uh, checking out our newest aspect, uh, Next Millie Round, which uh, that was Ed's baby right there coming up with that title. We have another one in the works. Yep. It was a 2,000-point uh, mixture of Space Marines, Necrons versus Eldar. Yeah, this is, this is going to be <coughs> Mike's personal segment, yep. uh, bringing you step-by-step step through. Uh, this his, is for our 40K his, fans. Yeah, his Warhammer game. Um, Maybe some other games if we're down the pipeline, but this is going to be his, it, he'll go over turn by turn, give you a really great idea, impression of how these games are played right. and how much fun they can be. And uh, we got a lot of views on that, and I just want to thank everybody that took their time out of there going out there. Um, Jakers, who um, is the hand, as we've been joking about, like you'll only see the red hand of Jakers, you won't see his face. Yeah, it's know, his... No. <laughs> Rid, Rid, his nickname is Redacted. <laughs> So um, he's the one actually, time we got him in front of a camera. I know the camera, the camera, didn't, camera didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> that was so funny. That was so funny. And he was actually, I don't care. That's fine. I'll be on the camera. But he wasn't. It wasn't. It was great. Um, maybe, he's he's going to do he's a couple. A superhero. Uh, maybe he is. Maybe he's invisible, man. But uh, he's going to come up with a couple Necron um, uh, how, how to's for you. Um, we're going to actually sit down tomorrow and uh, we're going to go at the table and he's going to give you a little Necron one on one. Uh, 101, I guess you can say, and uh, show you some uh, some tactics. So I'm excited about that. So we want to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in to us. Some big shout-outs to our uh, boys over at the Tabletop Journeys over there. Lee, as uh, you guys know, is a, uh, is a player on uh, both my game and Ed's yep. game, as well as a very, very known, uh, a, a long-time friend of both of ours yeah. for a very and, long uh, time. He, you know, he, He's in so many games, not just ours. He's a dungeon master. He's a player in a couple of games. Yep. And he is uh, running the uh, second best RPG podcast. <laughs> and actually, right now, they are no, breaking they're down. They're breaking down a lot of the newer stuff. Um, I think they just broke down the uh, Ravenloft oh, the book Van recently, guide, which, which, which if you guys yeah. have not checked that out yet, check it out and check out their review of it because that Van Richten's guide to uh, Ravenloft is fucking fantastic. Um, we, we, we broke on before about the whole Ravenloft thing, but if you guys want to 
do a creepy world, Ravenloft is the way to go. Definitely. Trust me. Trust me. I miss it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, thank you all very much. Once again, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you hit that little bell notification down there. And as always, share us, love us, thumbs and up. thumbs up us, and follow uh, www.basementquestgaming.com. We are actually have our first um, uh, uh, newsletter coming out. Yep, working and on a newsletter. One I have the comic strip. And to get that... You Dust, have to dungeon join, muster coming up. You have up. to join the mailing list to get that. Yes, yes. So make sure you go to www.basementquestgaming.com and go to that mailing list, sign up, and you will get that newsletter direct to you. We're going to have some things that we followed up on the show, um, some little nit, nit bits and little news uh, clip picks, and surprises. Surprises. I like surprises. I love too. surprises. But guys, we love y'all very much. Like we said, make sure you're sharing the crap out of us. And uh, any suggestions, any questions, hit those comments down there below. And uh, we love you. Release the Jenkins cut. <laughs> Hashtag Jenkins cut. <laughs>